Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This here is the Phoenix Delta. It's an open source, large format, so it's 350 millimeters diameter on the bed and 450 millimeters tall, so very, very large format. Uh, Delta printer running Clipper that was designed by Rolahan. And as far as I'm aware, I have the only one in the world, which is definitely kind of cool. This printer design though, especially being so large, does have some shortcomings. So this is going to be sort of a summer project and I'm going to make this printer as good as it can possibly be. Uh, I should say this version of the printer because Rolahan did announce that he is working on a version 2 of the Phoenix which will hopefully fix some of these issues, but I have this printer so I'm going to be working with what I have and making it as good as it possibly can be. Uh, I'm going to go through this video and sort of explain what I think the shortcomings of this design are and how I intend to remedy them, and then in the future you'll start seeing videos with me gradually, one by one, actually doing the things. Uh, first thing I should start off with, and this is not a design fault of Rolahan in any capacity, but the board that's here, the actual um, USB port on it for me to connect it to the Pi, you can see the Pi's not there, uh, it sort of died on me, and it's been... It's not fully dead, but it's it's finicky enough that it'll sometimes disconnect while I'm printing, and that's really, really annoying. So I'm actually going to be replacing that board. This is an SKR Mini E3 RRF, it's the RepRap firmware, even though it's still running Clipper. Uh, I'm going to replace it with this guy, the SKR Mini uh, E3 version 3. Uh, very similar. I'm only doing that just because it's the exact same form factor, and I can just same pin out all that. I can just unplug everything from here plug them in there, and then I'll be all good. It does mean I need to redo the firmware, which is kind of annoying, but uh, Rolahan himself has a couple of great videos on uh, using uh, Kiwa, I believe it's called, to uh, update Clipper firmware and, and install it. It's, it's quite easy. It's just a little tedious. The biggest issue with this printer uh, is definitely the frame. So I'm going to try to demonstrate this. It's a little bit difficult with only one hand, but I'm going to flex the top, and you can see that the bottom is not moving. The, the bottom is stationary. But if you look at the effector while I flex the top, it, it moves quite a lot. The whole printer is rather wobbly. And that's not really, like, I wouldn't say that's Rolahan's fault, but it's just when you have these one meter tall extrusions that are only 20-20, there's a fair amount of flex and play in the overall system. So naturally, this level of flex is really bad if you wanted to print fast. Um, Rolahan says you're pretty much good for anything under 100 millimeters a second, which is not too slow, but it's not quite the speeds I want to be going on a fully upgraded machine. I mean, I have a Voron after all, so I'm, I'm kind of used to, to fast print speeds. So I'm going to be designing some printed parts and uh, some non-printed parts to help really stiffen up this frame. And provided that I can get it stiff enough, I'm probably going to go direct drive on this effector as well. I don't like, just because this printer is so big, the Bowden tube is like really long. This is the longest Bowden tube I've ever had on a printer. And as a result, I'm running like five, six millimeters of retraction. It's just really hard to tune and it's, it's kind of annoying. So I, I'd much prefer, especially since it's a large printer, just slap a nice a Sherpa Mini or something, something nice and light on the tool head and just be done with it. Uh, alternatively, if I can't get the frame quite stiff enough that it'll be okay with all the extra moving mass, I'll probably look at doing a flying extruder where you take this guy and you mount it suspended above the tool head, I don't know, around here. I'm, I'm not really, um, I'm not really well educated on the subject of flying extruders, but I'm sure I can figure something out, and that too will let me cut down my retraction distance by a lot, especially if I use um, a stiffer Bowden tube like Neutrum's showed off a couple of times. Uh, other things I want to look at are the electronics again. I know I said I'm replacing them, but I don't really like the way that they're mounted here. Um, this mount here is PTG, so it's it's very flimsy. Like, it just it, it wants to bend. Same thing with the other one. And I don't like that. I want to mount things a lot more uh, rigidly. As well, I plan on adding some other electronics. I'm not going to speak too in-depth about that, just in case plans change. Uh, but I'm going to add some other electronics at the top, and I need a little bit more space. So this whole electronics thing is going to be redesigned and reprinted and just redone. Uh, so that's something to look out for. But number one priority for me is definitely this frame, because otherwise I'm sort of bottlenecked to 90 millimeters a second, and I know that this thing can go much faster than that. All right, thank you very much for watching. Uh, you'll see many more parts in the future about this massive, massive Delta printer. 
Um, let me know if you have any feedback for me, I don't know, video quality stuff, or just there's something you want me to do to this printer that you think would be useful. And hey, maybe if they're good enough, some of my mods will make it to the Phoenix version 2. Alright, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.